بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله My dear brothers and my sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله This is your brother Abdul Salam Ibn Ammar I've chosen the name of my father because by using Abu Hanifa I'm getting a lot of calls and texts from people that want me to do the ruqya and uh, asking me about the jinn and all that kind of stuff and it really is stressing out to see the great number of Muslims that actually do not have the right understanding about this matter. And uh, I could become a millionaire, subhanAllah, if I wanted to take the charlatans highway to give a ruqya, but uh, I fear Allah and I do not wish to sell Al-Quran to these poor souls that have been going on for years. So from now on, you're going to hear me, Abdul Salam Ibn Ammar. And that's my dad, and uh, I love my dad, and it'd be good to actually utter his name here so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows his rahmah on him. My dad is dead for almost more than 40 years now. But in any way, I have a very interesting question. Do you want to be happy? And I really mean it. I really, really mean it. Do you spend the rest, do you want to spend the rest of your day happy? No tension on the head, no problems with the heart, the world is large and beautiful, serene, calm. Doesn't mean that problems don't happen in your life. They happen and they happen big deal and big time. But actually their effect on you is extremely small to actually non-existent. People are struggling, people are going through all these dilemmas and problems and confusion and you are just there as if your world is all roses, and let me say, red roses. I hear you say yes, now get your pen out. I am going to share with you something that has made, is making, and will make the biggest impact in my life, and I love where I am. I really do, and I pray to Allah every day to really safeguard that sirat for me and make me a better person and let me enjoy more of what he has given me. What it is, this is in surah number 51, surah al-dhariyat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful three ayat. When the day I understood them, my life became lots, lots, lots better and a place that I would never ever trade. If you gave me one million pound or more to trade where I am now for that money, forget it. And I mean it. Look at this ayah. With a kill. And remind and recall and have tell people, what should I فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الذِّكْرَ, the reminder, will certainly benefit who? The believers. What kind of dhikra, ya Allah? What is this reminder that I should keep reminding myself and reminding people? Now, people make a mistake. When you remind people, it's not only by giving talks. You remind people in two ways. One, talking. And two, and most importantly, action. People need to see tawheed in you so that it rubs on them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a universal reality. And I haven't created the jinn or mankind and mankind for one single purpose to worship me. And worshiping Allah is a hugely misunderstood concept. But today, I'm going to lay it down in front of you in a very easy manner. Do this and watch how your life is going to go higher, much higher than you ever, ever expected it to go. What is that reality? You ready? Now write. Everything in my life is a tool. My purpose is Allah. Everything in my life is a tool. My purpose is Allah. Let me tell you when people mix the tool with the purpose. Food is a tool to be healthy, 
so that we can perform our duties on earth, worshiping Allah, marrying, working, all that. But when I change this tool into a purpose, I will start living to it, and then I start becoming fat, and then I become fat and fat, and it becomes hurtful. For another example, sleeping is a tool or a purpose. It's a tool that I relax my body and rest and everything so that I wake up in the morning fresh and ready to face the day. How about if I turned my sleeping into a purpose and I only sleep? See how my muscles start deteriorating uh, and that's it. I lose all that hypertrophy in the muscles. Money, is it a tool or a purpose? People that make it a purpose become like donkeys. They run day and night and there is no barak and that money and they can't even breathe. Why? Because they take a tool into and turn it into a purpose. You get it? Everything that happens to you every single day is a tool. Problems that you have with people. When you make them a purpose, you become like that fat person. You only eat to get fat. When you take a problem, a problem is a tool to make you a better person. I remember what I said before. Every problem comes with two solutions. Why do you choose to concentrate only on the problem? Why don't you look at the solutions? Any problem that comes to me, I look at it. This is a tool because the purpose is Allah. And I deal with the tool beautifully. People talk against you. It's a tool. It's not the purpose of your existence. Your family give you a hard time. They are patronizing you. They are guiltizing you. They are making you all this. They are a tool. Always. So the question is, if you want to really, really your life to become better, from the moment Allah gives you back your life, every single morning when you open your eyes, the fact that you open your eyes is a tool. Not your purpose. You don't live to open your eyes. When you eat, it's a tool to do better. When you go to work, it's a tool, not the purpose. Making money is a tool. Don't use it as a purpose. Because once you use it as a purpose, shaitan has got you from where he likes it. And remember, my brothers and my sisters, that our creation is only to worship Allah i.e. make Allah your purpose. The reason of your being is Allah. Does that mean I sit in the masjid and cry? No. Lord, no. But when I go to work, I don't go late. I go on time. Why? Because Allah tells me to honor the covenant. My contract says I should work from 9 to 5. I shouldn't go there at 10 past 9 and leave at half 4. That is haram. You get sins for it. And the money you make for you, they pay you from nine to five, but you actually work eight hours and a half. That half an hour is haram money that you are taking home. When the time of salat comes in, the salat is your purpose at that moment there. So you got to stand up and go perform the salat. And when you start performing the salat, it becomes your tool to worship Allah. I don't delay my salat. Quran, I don't forget it for the whole week and then open it now and then. No. The Quran is my tool to bring me close to Allah. And this is my brothers and my sisters when you start realizing money is a tool. That's why Allah says, give it away, donate in charity, sadaqah. Because it's a tool that, look at money like this. It's a tool that will help you get the job done. What is the job? Beloved by Allah. Why do I worship Allah? Is to be loved by Allah in this dunya. If Allah loves you in this world, what do you think on the day of Qiyamah is going to happen? Your children are a tool. Educate them so that they stand up on their feet and worship Allah as you worship it. Your wife is a tool. Your husband is a tool. They are not the purpose of your existence. Your sickness is a tool. Everything except Allah is a tool in your hands. What you do with it comes back to you. So please, 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 if life is not treating you well, it's because you've taken the tool as a purpose. If you have too many problems, it's because you have taken the tool as a purpose. 
a hammer is here so that as a tool to put the nail in the wall. Don't take the action of the hammer, doesn't, don't make the hammer as your purpose. It's a tool. So throughout the day, look at what you got. Is it a tool or a purpose? Obviously, the answer is a tool. Then use it for what it is. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you those contact lenses that has on them called a tool. A tool. Everything you do, my brothers and my sisters, is a tool. The time you are given is a tool. The money you are given is a tool. The health you are given is a tool. What's your purpose? Let me hear you. Say Allah. Once you start doing this, then suddenly life becomes more meaningful. Nothing is dear to your heart until you become scared. But look, I'll give you this example. Every day you come home from work, you take a bath and you walk in no problem. Why? Because your purse or your bag doesn't have a lot of money in it. You're cool. Now, one day you carry 5,000 pounds in your bag or your purse. What's going to happen? You start walking in the street and you start getting paranoid as someone might steal the money off you. What has changed? It's your perception about your status. Before, you had nothing to lose. You don't care. You don't even think. But today, you've got something to lose, money. And then you start behaving in very peculiar ways. And people will start looking at you. And they will know you've got something. They mug you. And then guess what? You go back and you say, yes, I knew it. they would steal the money from me. But actually, because the money, instead of using it as a tool, you used it as a purpose. And once you used it as a purpose, Allah let you deal with it. So please, 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 for the love of Allah, don't use your purpose and turn it into a tool. Or the tool turn it into a purpose. You must be aware throughout the day and the night that at any one point what you are doing is a tool and Allah is your purpose. So many ahadith mention that. So many ayat in the Quran mention that. My question to you is, why are you sad? Why don't you take a break and look at your priorities? Who are you prioritizing now? The purpose or the tool? Who is your first to think about? Don't tell me Allah with your tongue and your heart says everything else. You need to work on your perception. You need to be slave to your purpose, not to the tool that help you achieve your purpose. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us all towards this tool-purpose relationship. The day I realized this, the day I started using it, my life changed. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I share this to you. If I gave each one of you 10 million pounds, or I gave you the tool-purpose concept, the tool-purpose concept would take you far, far higher than the 10 million pounds would. I love you all. So spend a wonderful day and have the most beautiful times of your life and start implementing everything that comes to you or gets out of you that you do is a tool. The car that Allah gives you is a tool. Don't use the tool for any other reason but what brings you closer to the purpose. Do this and watch how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you truly of those that are here on earth to worship him. This is your brother Abdul Salam and my telephone number is 0787640 Go now and look at the tools that are will bring you closer to your purpose. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.